Hello, welcome. My name is Lisa Clifford from Power for Success, and I just want to chat with you today about why high performers embrace failure. Now, failure is often considered something that people want to avoid at any cost, and I wonder why that is. And I suppose when we look back at how we are at school, or certainly how schools are today on the whole, is that they don't want people to lose. Everyone's a winner. There's a medal for anybody. As though they don't want people to experience the feeling of failing or being disappointed. And so what that does is it makes a kind of a conditioned environment where people, children, need to feel that they're the same as each other. And therefore being different then becomes a space of being unsafe. Now, I know that the people in your businesses today do not want to fail. Um, they don't want to feel ashamed. They don't want somebody saying to them, um, who do you think you are? Why do you think you could try that? And worst of all, they don't want to feel, God forbid, disappointed. So what happens when the majority of the workforce are avoiding failure? They then create an environment of ordinary and they don't know and they don't trust at worst that if they fail if they dare to dream big or go for something that is in the realms of extraordinary that if they fail at that they don't know or trust that they will be supported they may lose their credibility and at worst their job so why should they stand out? Why should they go for a dream so big that only benefits the company and yet they stand to risk losing everything? Then there's the few who have this burning desire to think like an athlete, to dare to dream big, that they've got these ambitions that they need to fulfill, that they recognise that their purpose is about being impactful, making a difference. And they recognise that in order to do that, they are going to fail. And they know that if they fail, then all that they've done is tested the model of success robustly. And let me just be clear what I'm talking about when I'm talking about failure. I am not talking about sloppy work, poor quality or missing deadlines. I'm talking about somebody who sets goals and outcomes that exceed their own expectations or others' expectations or even what's expected of them within the business and that they fail achieving that extraordinary outcome. That's what I'm referring to when I talk about failure. So a high performer will set a goal and outcome, a project where they know that they have to learn and grow in order to succeed at it. Because they know that if they use their current um, skill set and knowledge, then they will ch achieve results that they've already achieved before. So they will not grow their results. They know that, that they're willing to fail, but they want to fail fast. And they want to collect the data and turn it into learnings to strengthen their path going forwards. Now, I've had the great fortune of hearing Tim Smith, the co-founder of the Eden Project, speak at the Royal Albert Hall for an IOD conference. And he says he never employs anybody who has not failed because he believes that they've not tried hard enough. And then when you look at um, personal trainers who strengthen our fitness and our muscle, they train people to, well, some train people to um, failure point so that they can get used to building and strengthening that muscle. They also, some, train you to a point where it goes to breaking point so that you don't plateau, to break through a plateau. Then we have the McLaren team who enter the most enduring, grueling, and most powerful races in the world. 
and align everything, their technology, their engineers, their mechanics, their teams, the whole lot, they align them with succeeding at those races. And I believe that so that they, they enter those races so that they have something to grow for, to prove towards and um, to stand for. And then when you think about Thomas Edison, you know, he supposedly failed a thousand times at inventing the light bulb. And when a reporter asked him, how does it feel to have failed a thousand times? He said, I didn't fail a thousand times. Inventing the light bulb was a thousand step process to its success. So as we um, all know, Henry Ford was also famously quoted as saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. But I want to leave you with 10 things I believe to be true. Forgive me for reading these. But one is, I don't believe you failed until there is no breath left in your body, i.e. no opportunity for you to attempt to succeed. You have not failed until, the, until that point. It's just not now if you haven't got that success. And aiming so high means, you know, when you're aiming so high and beyond expectations, means that you have inevitably smashed through the pre-existing targets. And when you stay truly focused to your purpose and what you're about, every action you do and every goal that you set is an opportunity for you to exercise that purpose through. And I know for sure that your first steps as a child, as a baby, were towards someone who greatly cared about you and yet let go of you so that you could take those amazing steps or even fall over, fail. And that when you learned to ride your bicycle, you definitely fell off that and probably still have the scars to prove it. But yet yeah, now you can ride a bicycle. And you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to fail to succeed greatly. If the risk isn't high enough, then neither is the reward. And you don't know what you're truly capable of until you have failed and recovered. And failing undoubtedly wakes you up. And you know, we are creatures of growth. We have an appetite to grow the same way that the roots to a tree need water to grow. For us to grow, we need development. And quite often life provides us such a lot of development through failing, that sometimes we're too quick to get past failing and put it behind us. And we miss the opportunity of collecting the data that failing was there to provide us with. So if you want to know what my three top tips are for embracing failing, so failure is feedback, not a setback. If you want to know what my three top tips are, then please go along and look at my blog on my website, powerforsuccess.co.uk. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.